Each one of us, including you, has the potential to find happiness in this moment and truly enjoy this life. Nurture yourself, honor yourself, stop the crazy mind chatter in your head that tells you all the time that you're not good enough. Do not get lost in this incessant chatter, lost in the self-limiting beliefs that you are telling yourself. For that is choosing to stay trapped in a prison that you have created and that you can leave any time you wish. See, whenever you're upset about something, it's because of the beliefs you have. Beliefs control behavior. Whatever you do, you do it because of your belief. With your beliefs, you have accepted your level of intelligence, social skills, artistic or athletic abilities, your relationship with health, beauty, and even weight. You have characterized yourself as being thin, normal, fat. Whatever your definition of yourself is now, that is what you have accepted as the norm or limit of your capabilities. The only limit, however, are the ones that you have chosen for yourself. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. And there was Aren't a snowstorm you? at Denver. Flights were delayed and um, so we arranged to have dinner and uh, when I showed up, she, she wasn't there. But she left me this note. And uh, she said, ran into someone cute, never done this kind of thing before, but you only live once. How many chances do we get? Your being here is such a miraculous thing and that your real job is to honor that, is to honor that. And the sooner you figure that out, oh, wow, wow. Imagine a life where you are following your own passion, a life when you are truly listening to what you want to do. Each one of us has a unique gift to offer this world but so often we are too concerned with what others want us to do that we get pulled down a different direction. When you begin to turn your focus away from what others expect of you and rather step into a path of honoring yourself, honoring your intuition, honoring what you want, your life will begin to unravel in ways you could never have expected. And much of what I stumbled into by following my curiosity and intuition turned out to be priceless later on. If I had never dropped out, I would have never dropped in on that calligraphy class and personal computers might not have the wonderful typography that they do. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college, but it was very, very clear looking backwards 10 years later. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. The way through the challenge is to get still and ask yourself what is the next right move. Not think about, oh, I got all of this to do. What is the next right move? And then from that space, make the next right move and the next right move. And not to be overwhelmed by it because you know your life is bigger than that one. You know you're not defined by what somebody says is a failure for you because failure is just there to point you in a different direction. Now, I'm sure in your experiences in school and applying to college and picking your major and deciding what you want to do with life, I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. I don't want to fall back on anything except my faith. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Fall forward. This is what I mean. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Fall forward. 
Now, fear is going to be a player in your life, but you get to decide how much. You can spend your whole life imagining ghosts, worrying about the pathway to the future, but all there will ever be is what's happening here and the decisions we make in this moment, which are based in either love or fear. So many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. What we really want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous to expect, so we never dare to ask the universe for it. I'm saying I'm the proof that you can ask the universe for it. Ask the universe and begin to action upon that vision for your life, for yourself. You have this life to live, so I urge you to live it. What a wonderful world I see skies of blue And clouds of white The bright blessed day The dark sick night And I think to myself What a wonderful world that compound day by day to make up this beautiful gift we call life. So I ask the question, how are you choosing to spend it?